Today I will mostly be a floating head. Oh, precious. I really wish perfumes were more huggable because if they were, I would hug them every day. Hi guys, it's Hatch Romano. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. The day has come. It's the time to rotate my perfume collection from spring, autumn, winter, sorry, to spring, summer. And I wanted to do this actually where my perfumes are displayed, but it is logistically, acrobatically, grammatically dangerous. It would have been a video of me clambering around on a bed, reaching up high and possibly dropping some of these and injuring myself. And I love you guys, but not that much. So we're gonna virtually do it. This is everything that I've pulled off of my autumn winter shelf. It's been so hot in London recently. I mean, today is a really hot day, so it's time. It's time to put these ones away and then make way for the spring, summer bo bottles in my collection. So when I say put away, it's not really a hard and fast rule that I follow. These aren't gonna go into a dungeon where they're just locked away forever for six months until it becomes autumn again. I mean, and to be honest, my dungeon's pretty full right now. I don't have any room in there for anything else. But yeah, I usually do this on my own, but I thought since we're all quarantined, let's look at some perfumes and tinkle around with some bottles and have some fun. So grab a seat. Is someone trying to climb in my window? So like I said, it's not a hard and fast rule that I follow. Uh, I, I have my, all of my fragrances ready to grab if I need them. I just like to have things that are suited to warmer weather it, within my reach whenever I want to just get ready and go out. <laughs> go out. <laughs> What's that like? I forgot. So anyway, this isn't going to be a review. This is going to be a quick thing. I'm going to go from the front to the back. That's where it was at, you know. So the first thing I always do is what do I consider to be definitely autumn winter? There are some fragrances that I keep on my shelf all of the time. So I'm just gonna go from the front and we're gonna do it. So here we go. Midnight Poison. This one is to me definitely a winter perfume and it's really a shame because I only have this much left. It was a gift. It reminds me of a very special time uh, on Valentine's Day when I went to a great restaurant in London called Beach Blanket Babylon in Notting Hill. Go and look it up if you care to. This one has to go. Manishtana by Prasanna Perfumes. Oh, I love this. Definitely winter, it's an incense perfume. So they're, they're just gonna go to the left. There's a couple of lushes here. We have Sappho, we have Snow Cake, which even though the name is wintry, it's actually kind of like a spiced marzipan, but it, I, don't, I wouldn't wear it in summer. Uh, Karma and Thousand Kisses Deep. These are all very, they're definitely more winter suited. And also, just so you know, I make a conscious effort to wear everything on my shelf through the six months once I rotate them. I have worn every one of these fragrances at least once during the autumn and winter. So the Lushies have to go. Oh my gosh, we have a lot to get through. So, Hypnotic Poison, for me, definitely an autumn winter perfume. Vanilla, spices, root beer type fluffy coconut smell. And this one always makes me sad to put away. It is Portrait of a Lady by Frederick Mal, and I don't mind so much putting it away because I, I, I can get my hands on it, but there's another Frederick Mal that I love which I put in place, so that one has to go. Camel and Moth by Zoologist. I have a few zoologists and I like to rotate them. Camel and Moth I wear in autumn and winter a lot. Gorgeous Oriental, outstanding, crazy, smoky, honey fragrance, so you have to go as well. Things are being revealed. These couple down here are from Strangers Perfumery. This one's Scotch Pea. It's an earthy fragrance, which is kind of barley and oak and a little bit boozy and then this one oh my gosh I love this 
This is Turkish Leather by Prin Parfums. Uh, this is like a, it's a honey date, uh, raisin, smoky leather perfume. Definitely not one for when it gets so hot here, you know. We're in, the UK is an island, obviously, and we're surrounded by water, and when it gets hot, it gets so humid, and anything heavy like that is just not gonna work. So, uh, there's a few amouages here, which I'll put at the front. These, this one, Epic, is one that I do feel could be worn in summer, because even though it's quite heavy, it's got a lot of caraway, and it's very aromatic and bright, so, this is going to be the first one I'm leaving on my shelf for spring summer. Uber has to go. Big, heavy, uh, opulent, white floral, uh, kind of incensey as well, I think. And Memoir definitely has to go because it's one of the deepest, darkest perfumes that I own. It's a Chypre and it's incensey and it's smoky and green and. I'm gonna to have to not smell everything as I go because it's, we're gonna be here all day. Lust by Lush. This perfume should never be worn in any situation. It has to go. Another one by Strangers, this is Cigar Rum. This is the Art and Olfaction Awards finalist. This one is definitely not spring, summer. It is kind of like a rum raisin type tobacco perfume. Really nice in autumn, so that one's going too. What are these Muglers here? I'm going to grab all the Muglers I can see in front of me. So this is the original formula of Angel. Another one that people might consider not to be worn ever in any situation. <laughs> but um, mine is, look, that old, it's not even blue anymore. It's like the vanilla's kind of taken hold. It's so super strong. I can't wear this in spring or summer. And this is Angel Liqueur, which is my favourite Mugler fragrance, I would say. It's the best version of Angel that there is, and it's kind of even heavier than the original, so it's gonna go. This one is Longcom, and it's called Kia de Longcom. It's vintage, it was a lovely gift from a wonderful person. Uh, and I've worn this one once, and it's, it's a leather, obviously, but it's really deep, and it's very sweet. It's like a gourmand vintage leather perfume, so this one, I think, would be so suffocating in spring, summer. So, Fendi, the original. This is another one I'm considering to keep on my shelf for spring, summer, because it's kind of light and powdery. I think this is an all-occasion perfume. This is also a gift from the same person that gave me the, the Lancome. So I'm going to put the, the Keeper ones on the right. Okay, next layer. So, Boulevard 34 Saint Germain by Diptyque. Another lovely gift from Peter, thank you. I love this fragrance, but it's definitely not an autumn, uh, spring, summer fragrance. It's super balsamic, so resinous and gorgeous. This works really good in autumn, so goodbye. Black Orchid, if you know, then you know. This one I love, I consider this fragrance to be, this is uh, La Jante by Argent Provocateur. I consider this to be one of the best designer mass market fragrances around. It's such a hidden gem. This one feels like it's niche. It's mainly full of myrrh, so it's a really dark resinous fragrance with powdery florals on the top. Definitely not a uh, uh, spring summer fragrance, so I'm not going to say that every time, I'm just going to say it and move it. This is Emma Mink. This is one that I kind of am considering keeping as an all-rounder. Yeah, it's got dark elements, but it's also got clean elements. So this one is going to the right. The next two, I definitely, I've rotated my shelf a couple of times and I always keep these two fragrances on the shelf all year round. One of them is Kier de Rissi. Is it that one? That one's Bois de Zille, and this one is Kier de Rissi. These are the vintage ones. They are going to the right. This one is Confetti by Lush. And as much as this is powdery, there's a darkness in here from a lot of foresty notes and violet leaf and coffee. So it's going to the left. Coromandel. 
this is a fragrance for me that it, even if it was only suited to one season or time, I would always put it on the right. This one is staying on my shelf because I always want to grab this. It's just a go-to. Oh, I said I was going to do the Muglers. Let's do more Muglers. Mugler. 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 And Mugler. Are there any other Muglers in here? No. So this one is kind of battered and bruised. This is Alien Liqueur. If you ever buy this fragrance, guys, be aware that the gold part of it actually rubs off and just gets a little bit worn. This was actually in my funeral box. Stuff that I need to just kind of finish or just focus on. Alien is just always going to be a winter fragrance, so it's going to go this side. This one, another Alien. This is Alien Taste of Fragrance. It's the Alien that has the salted caramel accord added to it. Again. Alien, to the left. Aura. I've been struggling with this fragrance for a really long time. I'm going to spray it in the air and just give it a little bit of a waft. To me, this is so sweet and vanillic. Although there's green elements in here and woodiness, uh, it, it does lean towards colder weather. So I, I'm a, such, such a big fan of this bottle. I always will be. It's like a precious gem. I love it. And the last Mugler I have is Angel Muse. There's no denying this is a wintry fragrance. It's, it's Angel with an added injection of hazelnut, or maybe it's praline, I think. But yeah, this is really woody, really sweet, and kind of deep, so it goes to the left. Okay, let's do the Tom Fords. Velvet Orchid, left. White Patchouli. This is one of my top 10 fragrances of all time. So even though it's a little bit more autumn winter, it's going to the right. And Sahara Noir, discontinued, amazing, cathedral style incense perfume. Definitely not summer, uh, winter. Definitely not summer, <laughs> sorry. I'm getting confused, there's so much perfume. This one I love, it's one that I reach for all the time. It's Amouage Opus 9, but this is a dark jasmine, black pepper, civet, incense-y perfume. Oh, for the first time I can see through this bottle. I've used this much. I'm glad about that. Via Armis by Beaufort London. Gosh, this is another one that shouldn't be really worn ever. I only wear this when it's dead of winter, super cold, and it's just, it's so spicy and tea and licorice and oud and opium and craziness that I think if I wore that in summer, I would offend myself. So this one has to go too. All right, moving on. I have three Eau de, uh, Italy with Orange perfumes. Rien, Herman, and Marquise de Sade. For me, the only one that can move to the right on this occasion is Herman because it's abstract, bright, rosy incense but it's got this ambroxany type lightness about it. Rien. Marquise de Sade, they have to go. d and Red Cap. If any of you know me by now, this is one of my favourites ever. Right. Samsara Eau de Toilette and also Samsara Eau de Parfum. Look at the state of this box. Um, I always want to reach for Samsara, so it always has to be on my shelf regardless. I will wear this on a day when I'm just at home and I want to just bathe in its beautifulness. And the Eau de Parfum version, that was the Eau de Toilette, the Eau de Parfum version can go to the left because I'm using the Eau de Toilette first. So that's the reason. Let's move things. All right, Lulu, left. Namban, this is one of my favorite perfumes in the entire world. Oh, it's it's an oriental without being oriental. There's so much stuff going on in here. Spices, resins, woods, leather. It's not a summer perfume, so I'm going to put it to the left, but it's always going to be just ready, just in case I want to get it whenever I like, you know. Deal Addict. Winter. What else? Dendera. This is a fragrance by Peter. He's a fellow YouTuber, actually, and... This was a gift recently, and uh, this isn't gonna be going in my spring summer shelf. It's, I'm actually gonna gift this on because I'm not a fan of it. Sorry, Peter, but this is not for me. 
it's super woody and dark and uh, I'm just not a fan of this so I'm, I'm gonna pass this gift on. What else? Opium goes without saying it's one of the queens of the orientals has to go to winter. Ivress. Now this is a really special perfume because it reminds me of 1994-1996 when I used to go to a local department store and I would always go and just smell this when it was called champagne that's when I first discovered this perfume and a friend of mine got me this 125ml bottle of Ivress and I love it so much and I don't want it to go off so I'm gonna put it in the right pile this will be on my shelf for spring summer so two Ruth Marston Brooks oh. Amorosa just unbelievably beautiful tuberose soapy clean Pantene conditioner smelling perfume I want to wear this all the time so that's going to the right the same as her other one signature I will wear this even when it's warm because it's got enough crispness to cut through heat and enough strength so that's that one we're getting to the end and then we're going to start putting the spring summer ones on so i have two aaron terence hughes fragrances here one is called oud this one is one of those put it in the category of via armis and lust i mean this is so potent that it's barely wearable in winter and this one tobacco oud vanilla this one's super sweet dense thick heavy Oud, it's kind of fluffy and sweet. Uh, definitely not a summer fragrance, so goodbye. I have two Serge Luton's, Shergi and Santel Majuscule. Both, one's a tobacco, one is fruity, cherry, beautifulness, and this one is like a chocolate rose sandalwood. You know, when it's hot, you don't want to wear something that's cloying, you know? So, this is Tango by Mask Milano, and this is an amber, and ambers are usually oriental, they're deeper, they're darker, they're more opulent, and I don't really wear orientals when it's a day like this, when it's really sunny, so that one has to go too, as beautiful as it is. Oh, bye guys, see you soon. You're right down there. Halfetti by Penhaligans, super obnoxiously loud perfume, rose oud, Plenty of other woods, kind of powdery, really, really strong, in your face perfume that suffocates people even in winter. So you go into the left, to the left, to the left. Black Jeans by Versace. This one is going to stay on my shelf only because of one reason. It's not particularly a summer, spring, summer perfume, but. Uh, I need to finish it. This was a gift. It's very much discontinued and it's precious, but it's getting towards the end. I can feel it and I don't want it to go bad. So I will make a conscious effort to wear this one. If anyone's never tried this, gosh, it's, it's really nice. Why did they discontinue it? Silly Versace. Silly. Givenchy Pie is going to be going to the left. This is actually my best friend's signature. And if he sees this video ever, which he won't, He'll probably be saying, give me it if you're not going to wear it. Don't, you're not going to wear it for another six months. But um, yeah, I love it. It's a very benzoin, um, balsamic vanilla with a few aromatics. I love this fragrance. I just don't wear it that often. Look, I've had this for quite a few years. Andy Tower, Lady Des American. Oh, this is number two by Andy Tower. This is a gorgeous labdanum, dry spices, it's about desert wind, it's absolutely stunning, I love this. But I do tend to wear this in um, autumn and winter, or on cooler summer nights, so... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This one is Esparta by Pierre Guillaume. This is a huge patchouli, huge rose, incense, there's oud in here, there's I think some kind of red fruity notes as well. This is the one that gets compared to Portrait of a Lady by Frederick Mao, by me, amongst other people. But this is definitely not going to be uh, a spring summer because it's so much patchouli in here, it's kind of a dark brooding fragrance, so no. Shalimar. 
Oh, Shadamar, you're an amber, you're an oriental, but you're light and fluffy, aren't you? So, Shadamar, I will always keep out on my shelf. I wear Shadamar to bed sometimes, so it's a nice, after the shower, reach for something cosy. You go into the ride. And lastly is Decadence by Marc Jacobs. Look how dark it's gone from the vanilla. This one to me is most definitely autumn winter. It's sweet, it smells like violets, and it's really woody as well. It's, it feels kind of incense to me as well. It's kind of, it's got this weird smokiness that I don't know where it comes from. And I hate this bottle. <laughs> I just don't like it at all. But you know. So it's going to the left because I don't wear this in spring and summer. I must say, so many members of my family have loved this when I've worn it that they now all own bottles of it too. So, it's time to add the spring ones to my shelf. It's gonna take a break and then I'll be back. Ah, oh, oh, pins and needles. Hope you guys appreciate this. Okay, I'm excited. It's been a while since I've actually dug around in this box since six months ago when I actually put them away. I've dug around a little bit to get things out, but the first thing I wanna put on my spring summer shelf is the fragrance that I'm, what's the word that Americans say, stoked? I am so stoked to put this fragrance on my spring summer shelf. It is B by Zoologist. I said in my review, I was so excited to see how this performs in warm weather. So I can't wait to add this zoologist to my shelf. I have my winter zoologists and I have my summer zoologists and B is gonna be my spring summer one. I've not worn it yet when it's been really warm. I might actually wear it today. Actually, I'm already wearing Sailors by the zoo. But anyway, B is gonna be my first spring summer. On the theme of zoologists, I'm gonna grab, while they're here, my other summery zoologists. Nightingale. Let's put them here so you can see them. Okay, I can't find it right now, so we're just gonna move on. So the next one I'm gonna put on my <laughs> spring summer list is All Pashmina by Pierre Guillaume. Don't let the black bottle fool you. This is a tomato leaf perfume with verbena and rosemary and basil and stuff like that. It's a super green uh, thing that just, it just smells so wonderful. I actually wore it for the first time the other day this year when I did dig around in here. Uh, and that one I really like, so I'm adding it. Ah, oh, there it is, Chameleon. So these are my kind of spring summer zoologists. Chameleon, Ylang Ylang, Coconut, Sandalwood, Frangipani, multiple other notes. Oh, just getting a waft of that makes me want to put it on right now. I have this problem every time I do a video like this, I want to just wear everything. Maybe I will, who cares? The next one is J'adore by Dior. Yeah, this fragrance is a little bit screechy and it's a little bit too jasmine-y. So I still really like this. I mean, I tried Gabrielle Chanel Essence recently and it reminded me of this. It was just a little less screechy and a little bit more full-bodied. So if you haven't tried that one yet and you like J'adore, maybe try that one. So this one is called American Cream by Lush. I like it. It's kind of suited to all seasons, but I guess I would wear it in summer because it's a little bit more of like a soft vanilla. It's not an, a thick, gloopy, suffocating vanilla. Frangipani, also by Lush. I like this. It's a summer floral with an almond nuance going on. Not too cloying. So I'm going to put that one in there as well. Oh gosh, there's, there's a lot of things here that... There's another Lush. This one's called Love. I've used so much of this perfume. This is a super spicy lemongrass apple type perfume. This one I know is a favourite of a lot of people. It's called Flora Botanica and it's by Balenciaga. This is great. This is like an icy, cool, minty rose perfume. It's kind of plant-like. Really clean, really fresh and it just gives you that feeling of freshness when you wear it. And fresh isn't always summer. I mean, it is, but that's not the only style of perfume that constitutes a summer spring perfume. But for me, this is definitely it. It's like a, it almost has like a cooling effect when you wear it. 
so I love that one I can't wait to wear this one again and I love this bottle the way it changes colour when you spin it around yeah it's pretty cool I was sad to say goodbye to Portrait of a Lady hypothetically but I get to put carnal flower on my shelf Oh, the tube rose fragrance to end all tube rose fragrances. This one might be considered a bit too strong for winter, for spring, summer, sorry, but yeah, it's so good. If it's worn in the right amount, this is the ultimate tube rose. Eucalyptus, coconut, all kinds of cool stuff going on in that one, for sure. We have another lush one here. This one's called Death and Decay. This one's a really nice, it's almost kind of mimosa, ylang perfume. Not too heavy. I mean, you'd have to go with a light hand with this one, but it's a floral that doesn't really portray death and decay in a bad way. It's not dark, it's friendly and soft. So that one is going on the shelf as well. This one is really exciting. It's one of the newest things I got. It's by a company called The Zoo and it's called Tuberose, Tuberose Organique and I can't wait to see how this performs in warm weather because when I sprayed this on in colder weather it was kind of explosive so I'm guessing I'm going to have to be careful how I apply this one but this one's a real realistic Tuberose perfume I almost chinned the door over then. Uh, anyway, so this is super realistic, green, buttery, just very naturalistic smelling tuberose and I can imagine that in warm weather this is going to just really radiate off of my skin so I'm excited to put that one on the shelf. This one's really special to me, it's just called Fragonard and it's the, I guess the main staple or signature fragrance from Fragonard. It's to to be honest, it's basically like a dupe of an a, &A by Cacherel or Anaïs, Anaïs. I need French lessons. But to me, it's better. It's more full-bodied, it's kind of vintage smelling, it's a big, huge bouquet of multiple flowers that's very, very hard to pinpoint. So this one will be going on the shelf, even though it's gonna weigh the shelf down because it's a really big bottle, <laughs> but that's okay. Eternity! This is the cologne version, it's the vintage one. It's a super fresh carnation, bit spicy, but clean, soapy smelling perfume going on the shelf. Now this one is very important to me, Stella. This used to be a signature of mine, and every time I smell it, I get the feels from this one, but uh, they reformulated it, and it just became a little bit well, actually, I'm, I'm lying because I haven't even smelled it. I don't want to smell the reformulation. I know it's going to be bad. This one is the older formula of Stella. It's another icy rose perfume, really clean, kind of soapy and excellent. I'm also putting this Amouage on my shelf. It's Amouage Lyric Woman, and this is a... I, I guess you could wear this on every season, but this is more... It's like a, a subtle kind of powdery tender rose that it kind of wears quietly but it's always present and I think it's absolutely beautiful and winter kind of swallows it up a little bit so that's why I don't put it on my shelf in autumn winter so that's gonna be a spring summer for me. Okay, Serge Luton's Alain Nuit. This one's pretty much like a straight up jasmine fragrance and jasmine even though it's quite often a night blooming flower. I think jasmine worn with the lightest touch on summer days or summer evenings smells absolutely beautiful. So going on the shelf. This one's called Entre Ciel et Mer. It's an aquatic perfume. It's by Pierre Guillaume and it smells like sea plants and sun cream, expensive sun cream and salt and pear a little bit as well. This one's a great one. This is this is just destined to be a holiday perfume. It's destined to be a sunny day perfume, so that's why it's going on my shelf now. So this one is a staple. This is CKB. It's a cheapy but goody, and I've, this is something that's in, been in my collection for years and will never leave. 
The reason it's being a spring summer one is because it's so full of white musk. It's got that laundry cleanliness type feeling when you wear it. So this one will always be a staple and will always be on my shelf. So this is Pulp by Byredo. Anyone that smelled this will know. This is a hyper green fruity fig perfume with leaves and it's so strong and this is a perfume that really for me withstands heat it withstands i took this to india with me when i went and not many fragrances can survive the humidity of southern india where i go when i go there this one survives everything i hope they didn't reformulate it mine's quite an older bottle so pulp oh my gosh i cannot wait to wear this although someone else has used a lot of this which I have to hide this fragrance quite a lot. Maybe it should go on the left pile. The next one is Opus One by Amouage. And a lot of the time, Amouage fragrances don't really suit warmer weather, I don't think. But hey, they're from Oman. They're from, they're from a, a hot place. But this one goes on my spring summer shelf because it's a floral. And although it's on the heavier side of being a floral, it's definitely not wintry. It's ylang prominent, it's cardamom, it's kind of peppery as well. And I do feel like I can get away with wearing this in warmer weather. Only if I wear the right amount. If oversprayed, this one can become quite bad. But this is real opulent floral, so this would be like a, a summer evening type thing. You know I don't follow rules, but I have to rotate my shelf at some point. The next one is Pierre Guillaume, it's called Bokeh Maasai. This fragrance is centered around peony, so it's a kind of effervescent, pink, kind of sparkly, pink, flowery perfume, but it's also got coffee in it that's got an edge. And I can't wait to wear that one. It's kind of sweet, but it, it's okay. Tribe. This one is one that I can't really place on, on any level or any space. I don't know when or where I should wear this because this to me is just childhood, but I got Tribe, it's from the 80s. It's from when I was a teenager and I love this, but it's definitely more a, it's definitely not a winter thing. It's kind of like a the original fruity floral thing before that became an actual thing, so yeah. I love this, it's powdery as well, it's a really tough one to describe, but I did review it anyway, so go and see if you like. Let me just get this out of my face. This one is Jo Malone, it's called English Oak and Hazelnut, and although it's a kind of woody, uh, the, wood, the name is woody and the ingredients are woody and it's nutty and stuff like that, this is actually quite a bright, clean, woody fragrance and I never thought I'd buy a Jo Malone fragrance before. I've tried quite a few and Pomegranate Noir was the only one that I really liked. But this one, a friend of mine wore it to a concert we went to and it just flowed behind him, this clean, gentlemanly type smell. Not so much gentlemanly, but it's, it's kind of masculine. And I loved it and I wanted to get it immediately, so I got it. This is quite the spring summer collection happening right here. This is Junkie, it's this huge favorite of mine and this fragrance is kind of green with whispers of incense and violet and gardenia. It's like a floral, it's like a floral incense with hemp and greenery and it's clean, green, crisp and gorgeous and works really nice in weather that actually is it's a bit too hot for this right now I think but I don't care, I'll wear it anyway. This beauty is called Virginia and it's by Strangers Perfumery. If nothing else defines spring in a bottle, look no further, this one. This is Prin, the perfumer was going for English Country Garden. I'm gonna spray it in the air as well. Uh, this has got things in it like bluebell and elderflower and stems and plants and it just, to me, it signifies the, the moment when spring finally arrives and roots start shooting out of the ground. And sadly it's discontinued, but this is a real good one. Last spring I wore this quite a lot and just absolutely loved it. So 
excited to wear this one again. So I have another by Rido and it's called Flowerhead. I really like this because it's a big white floral. It's not too obnoxious though. It's kind of smoothed out. It's got a lot of white flowers in it, multiple. It's like a bouquet of a head wreath that are worn in weddings apparently. And I don't really reach for this one that much, even when it's spring and summer. So I'm gonna make an effort to wear this. Let's just have a little spritz. Everything's gonna smell of everything. It's so nice, it's mainly tuberosey, but it's, uh, it's smoothed out and it's kind of, it feels a bit waxy and cool. I don't know, I love this one, so. Flower head. So this is Jean Paul Gaultier Classic Essence, X Essence it's called. This one kind of teeters on the edge of being maybe a bit too heavy for warmer weather, but I think it's okay. It's one of those uh, in the evening type fragrances where there are some fragrances that you think are probably too heavy to wear in warmer weather, but when you think, ah, oh, okay. Especially in England, you get cooler summer evenings, and this is one of those ones that would fit that. I hate putting things in boxes, but I want to wear different things at different times of the year, so. So this one's called Fleur de Foudre, and it's by Pierre Guillaume again. Same line as this one, actually. This is a Champaka fragrance with tea. I need to get off my foot because I have major pins and needles right now. Tea, pepper, uh, Champaka flower. I think there's vetiver in it as well. It's a spring-like, almost tropical floral, but the pepper kind of grounds it and it makes it a, a, just a little bit aromatic and light. It's like it's one of the like a light peppery floral smell which I really like and it's very unique as well. It's a little bit difficult to describe but I can't wait to wear this or maybe I'll wear this one today. Who knows? Guillain Insolence. This one might be a bit not controversial but people might say gosh you would, you would wear that in summer because this is one of well it's the heaviest violet fragrance I think I've ever tried. It's kind of unforgiving and relentless in the best way possible. But I think if I wore this on a summer evening or spring evening, it would be fine. This one is one of those perfumes that you can easily overspray and just choke people out. And I did that when I went to New Zealand with my friend. <laughs> I wore this on a hot day and she said that she could smell me. She was walking way behind me as we were browsing shops and she said, I can smell you wearing this. But yeah, this is in my spring summer rotation for being a violet that can withstand heat. That's why it's in there. Don't roll off now. This one, Versace Crystal Noir. This is the Eau de Parfum version and it is the older version of it as well. This one, although being very, very strong, has a lightness to its character and it definitely can withstand heat. Oh, I wanna just squash that myth that there's no coconut in it because I mean, the brand and the brand ambassador I've spoke to will tell you there's no coconut in here, but I definitely smell coconut. A lot of people say, I don't smell coconut. I do, I don't. I do, but it's like a gardenia, soapy coconut smell, and it's strong enough to withstand heat, and that's a factor that I put into place when I'm trying to consider what's gonna go on my shelf and what isn't, so. This one, for pure strength. The Precious. So this is the 1990 something version of Miss Dior Cherie. This was a gift from a colleague of mine and I was over the moon when she gave it to me. It's the strawberry popcorn flowery version of Miss Dior Cherie, the one that was really beautiful but it's been changed so many times I don't know what's happened to it. Spring, summer, done. To the end, this is Mojito Chipra, also by Pierre Guillaume, this guy. And this one is a huge strawberry perfume. It's strawberry with icy mint and woods cutting through it. So when you first put it on, it feels like it's gonna be too sweet and overbearing, but this has some sillage like no other. It's so strong. I have a story, but I don't have time to tell it. But this can withstand 40 degree heat in Turkey, this one, and but still retain a freshness. So 
Strawberry Mint Freshness. Love this one. Going on my shelf now. This one I have to be very, very careful with, and it's Eden, because it's the, um, the vintage version of Eden. Let me just move these out of the way. So Eden is a tough one because Eden I wear usually only when it rains. It's a super polarizing perfume and people just don't really understand it, but I do. And I appreciate it for its unusual beauty. So this is for spring days when it's a bit cooler and it rains. It's mimosa, it's a multitude of flowers, it's luscious, it's green, it's a lot of stuff and it's not for the faint hearted. And finally, Jean-Paul Gaultier Classic Essence. No, Intense, this one's called. I literally just decanted so much of this out for my friend, so uh, it's nearly gone, but this one I love. This is nothing to do with the original Classic. I don't even know why they called it the same name. It's almost like an entirely different perfume. This one's got enough floral, but enough soapy, clean brightness to be worn in warm weather. And this was going to be my scent of the day. In fact, it was, but then I showered and changed my scent. It reminds me of my friend, so I love this. And try it out if you want to, but it's kind of hard to find. I don't know. So I'm going to leave it there because I literally can't feel my legs anymore. Hope you guys like this video. This is going to be my spring summer shelf, along with the couple of stuff that I put. There's probably about 15 more down there that I put. And um, yeah, now comes the actual task of putting them on the shelf without falling over. And finished product. There are a couple of changes towards the end of the video that I made just because I didn't want my shelf to fall down. <laughs> but um, yeah, this is the end product of my spring summer shelf. They're kind of sparkly. And you see the shadow? This is why I can't film it in a normal way. But there you go. Let me know about your spring summer rotation. I want to know if you guys actually rotate your fragrances or if you don't, but for me, I'm going to probably take a few more off because I feel like it might fall down. But this is how it happens. Anyway, speak to you guys soon. Goodbye. Hope you guys like this video. I've been sitting here for a long time. Enjoy your weekend. I'm out on my own, trying to make the world smell better one video at a time. Okay, I've got work to do. I have to go. Okay, bye guys.